following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. The Mahabharata, Maha actually means great. In Bharata, sometimes it's related as war and sometimes warrior. When you read the Bhagavad Gita, which is part of this book, when uh, Krishna is addressing Arjuna, he said, O Bharata, which means O warrior. So this, uh, uh, the whole poem, because it's a poem, is called the Mahabharata, and it is the great warrior or the great war. And uh, really, it's a very profound, very profound book. It's very big, older than the, the Bible. Remember that uh, the Bible is a book written uh, in the third sub-race of the Aryan race because Moses came from Egypt and uh, Jerusalem, of course, was born after the civilization of Egypt and Egypt came as civilization from India. And India, of course, uh, we have this uh, great uh, poem, which is called the Mahabharata, when you find the story of uh, this root race, really, in a very beautiful way, described in Sanskrit. And uh, since uh, in the forum, someone asked us to explain about the Mahabharata, and this is... I mean, we're trying to explain the Bible, and you know, we are stuck in Genesis, in the first, second chapter, and we are there and don't move, because it's very profound. And this is very profound, too. And in order to, to dig in it, we have to know Sanskrit. But of course, knowing Kabbalah in the symbology, the interpretation of symbols or archetypes, we can dig into it and see the meaning of it which is very profound. And uh, for that, of course, we had to quote chapters and verses, and it's a huge book. But thank goodness, uh, this uh, uh, movie maker, Peter Brooks, made this movie based on the, on the book. And it's very accurate. So I said, uh, it's better if we watch the movie. Actually, there are three CDs. We are going to watch today only the first CD and uh, uh, explain about it after. But I said, maybe if I talk before, Jesus, of course, uh, talking about the creation of the world, or in other words, the Genesis, according to the Mahabharata. And uh, since uh, in Hinduism, you know that uh, they believe uh, or they address many gods and goddesses. And the relationship of the gods 
with human beings, which is precisely the synthesis, as we, as we do. We always talk about the human being, but also uh, uh, about the monad. We are actually, physically speaking, the lower part of God. And God will be, in this case, the higher part of all of us. And in the Hebrew, the word Elohim means gods and goddesses. Somehow the translators, because they were always addressing one God, they translated as God. But the point is that all the ancients know that the one God that we have within is one with the gods of others that are within them. So that word Elohim embraces all the whole as this uh, movie. So when we uh, heard, for instance, all the Hindus, the Brahmins, they believe in many gods. I said, no, not only them, Christians also, but they call it angels. It's just a change of names. But the, real, the reality is that everybody believes in gods, whether you call it divas, angels, masters, monads, but they exist. And God is the, the flame that burns in every single God. So that's why God is God's, or Elohim in other words. And here we will see precisely uh, that boy that you see in the beginning of this movie represents any one of us. Hmm? This is how we had to start. Understand that that boy is any one of us. And that he's talking with his guru or with somebody that knows about it. And this is how everything starts. You know, when we are looking for the knowledge, we find the guru, we find the enlightened man, which is following the path and explains. This is how everything starts from within you and from the universe. So let us now uh, begin with this, and uh, at the end we will discuss if you memorize everything. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Amen.